is going to be a holographic midge. Got a size 12 fire hole 317 in the vise and a 764 copper bead. I'm going to go ahead and attach our tying thread here. It's not a pattern that they use on um, Pyramid Lake. Uh, watch the Reno Fly Shop tie this pattern. Um, I haven't fished it and I haven't fished on Pyramid Lake yet. I hope to at some point in time. Um, but it's a solid pattern uh, from what I understand up there uh, on the Pyramid Lake. So I'm just going to take some thread wraps here right behind the bead. Um, not to secure the bead, um, but to just start building up our taper here. Um, we're not going to need much of a taper on this. We want to keep it fairly skinny. So the first material I'm going to tie in is just going to be a piece of uh, copper wire. I'm going to be tying that on my side of the hook, so you're not going to be able to likely see it. Brassy size. We're going to go ahead and let this come all the way around fairly deep into the end of the hook here. couple more turns there. Yeah, about halfway down the bend of the hook there. I'll go ahead and bring my thread back up. Um, just helping me start to build a little bit of, of um, thread tapering here. And from here we're going to tie in, um, really this is a pretty straightforward fly. I'm this brass wire, uh, brass or the copper wire brassy size. Then I'm going to be using some um, hollow tinsel and this is going to be kind of medium and it's in a wine color so it's a deep dark kind of red color we're going to go ahead and attach this i like to use this um, in the bobbin um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about why i like to do that especially if i'm going to be tying up a few of these um, rather than just cutting off a piece of this tinsel i'm just going to work on getting that piece of tinsel secure here and I'll draw it back a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and let um, this tinsel lay down forward because we want to go ahead and use some of it um, some of its additional body um, to help build that taper as we move up and then I just kind of like to lay it over the back end of the hook here as flat as I can because I want the very bottom here where we, we're going to start the abdomen on this fly to be pretty tight, pretty small. So we're going to just take that right back down to that about halfway point in the bend and then we'll bring it right on back up. So with those two materials in place, um, all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to work a little bit on taper. Um, again, I don't want this to be a really fat fly. I am going to turn my bobbin um, counterclockwise a couple of times just to flatten the thread out a little bit. And I will turn my vise uh, from time to time to the side just so I can look at that taper. So if you're working on building a taper, you're going to want to take touching wraps. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take touching wraps back and we're going to go just before the bend of the hook here. And we're going to bring it back forward. We're going to make a couple of passes like this, basically having the distance each time. So again, we're going to go back down towards the bend of the hook, but not quite as far this time and then back up towards the, behind the, the bead. And again, we're gonna come back. So I throw my bobbin all over the place. A little ways, a little bit back towards the front. Then maybe just a little bit more here. 
It's like that. Um, and you can see that that builds a nice taper. Not too fat, like I said, we don't want this to be really fat. So I'm gonna, I've, again, I've got my tinsel on this um, bobbin here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten it a little bit. I'm going to let it dangle. And then I'm going to kind of let it spin a little bit counterclockwise. Not a lot, but you're going to see it's starting to put a twist, a little bit of a twist on this um, Mirage tinsel. And that's just going to help us lay this down flat. So I'm going to start out at the very back there, make sure I get one good wrap around the base. And as I turn, because I've got this twisted, um, it's actually going to untwist pretty flat um, as we work our way up the shank of the hook. You can see we can actually go pretty fast. We could probably churn out a lot of these um, flies in, in pretty short order. Make sure that I'm clear up behind the bead there. Then I'm going to just grab my thread off of my bobbin cradle throw it around again for good measure. We'll just take a couple of wraps over the top here, securing that material down, and then I'm going to just take a couple of wraps behind the bead. I'm going to come in with our, our scissors. We'll go ahead and cut off the excess balance of that material right there. I still have it in my bobbin so I have it available to use for my next fly. So the bobbin just again it helps you be able to kind of spin that uh, counterclockwise a little bit and, and just make it a little bit easier um, to wrap up the hook. And now we're just going to wrap our uh, with fairly open wraps our copper wire. So we have it right there behind the bead. Just take a couple of thread wraps over the top of it. And take a couple of thread wraps on the other side of it. From there we can do our little helicopter trick and let that copper wire break right off for us. And we're gonna put some UV resin on this, um, but we're gonna go ahead and whip finish this and we're gonna put a couple of whip finishes on this just for um, good measure and to build up a little bit of a collar, so. There's one. We'll do one more. With that, I'm going to turn my sideways and get the other end of my wet finisher to cut this thread off. So for UV resin, um, you, you'll note that I've got a really big glob here um, and that's okay. Um, I'm going to put some on the bottom and some on the top and by using that amount I'm able to kind of stretch this right on down. I want to make sure I get it over um, all the way down to the, the bottom here uh, where those wraps start at the bend of the hook. Make sure I've got it on either side. So in short, I've got a lot of material to work with by putting that big of a glob on there. This is actually going to give me a, a, a moment to work with it uh, before I hit it with the torch. And once I feel like I've got it coated pretty good, um, I'm actually just going to take this uh, sewing pin and I'm going to run it from the back up to the front and wipe the resin off on my fingers. Probably not a good idea, but that's what I do. Um, just kind of getting some of that excess off and creating, um, you know, maybe a little thicker up by the bead, um, if at all. But that'll help these um, copper uh, wire ribbing to kind of stand out a little bit more, so it looks a little bit more bumpy or segmented. From there, I'm just going to hit it with my UV light and cure the resin. And that's about it. Um, 
that is the holographic image uh, give it a shot